Hey guys, welcome back to Making Everyday Magic. My name is Shauna. If you are new here, we are a homeschooling family of four. We are in our last week of our first semester of the 2021 homeschool year. And today I want to talk with you. I just want to offer you tips as a work from home homeschool mom. Guys, before we go any further, please scroll down, hit the big red subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications, and give this video a thumbs up. As many of you know, I am a work from home homeschool mom. Now, let me dive a little bit into kind of what that means, my parenting journey and my business journey. I have been, like I'm trained, skill, career, um, a hairstylist, and I have worked for myself. I have been self-employed since about, I don't know, a year and a half maybe uh, before we actually had kids. So um, I ventured out and started working for myself right like a month or two after my husband and I got married. So I have been out on my own as a fully operational uh, business owner for like, so long, 12 years, 12 years, a really long time, a really, really long time. So working for myself was not anything new. Now I have progressed. I actually left uh, working in a salon, right? I think my youngest was like a year, year and a half. And I actually left that job because I had started a side business. Many of you know, I actually have another business um, over on Etsy, a little shop, and I make and manufacture a product that I then package, ship, and sell. So I have done a service industry and I have now done like a retail industry. And then now as I build this channel and my kind of sister channel, sister brand, I guess for lack of a better term, uh, Suitcase Princess, I'm now kind of on the content creation side of a business. So. I do work from home. I run my fully operational real business uh, from my home and I have um, the entire time I've had that business, but I've been exclusively working from home since, like I said, my youngest was about a year, year and a half. So that's coming up on, um, I, I guess I left the salon five years ago, four years ago. So I've been exclusively working from home for four years. You guys know our homeschool journey. This is our fifth year of homeschooling. So I've actually been homeschooling um, longer than I've been kind of working in the home. Now, the way that that's looked as far as having kids is that because I was a hairstylist and my schedule was always quite flexible. And um, in order to cut hair, you kind of have to do that when people's hair is not at their jobs. So I did tend to work more of like the evening hours and Saturdays. So we, my husband and I had it worked out where we would kind of, we worked near each other. Our, our businesses, our offices were near each other. So I would drop off my daughter and then head into work. And he made a point to be available to take her and he'd keep her, you know, um, on Saturdays or get her to extracurriculars, things like that. And we had a really good trade off. They both, both of my daughters went to a mother's day out program. That was a couple days a week, which allowed me to take some daytime clients. So that is what my kind of parenting work life has been. I have been fortunate in the sense that I have never had to work like a nine to five, like a traditional full time schedule that I wasn't in 100% control of. So I am very fortunate in that respect. And in that respect, this may not be relatable for everyone, but I feel like over the course of my journey, both as a business owner, as someone who's had to work from home, work for themselves and a homeschooling parent, that I do have some tips to offer. And so that is what we are coming to now. So if you um, do work from home full time for someone else, if you work at all from home and homeschool, if you homeschool, none of these things, none of these things are easy. They are all very hard and they are all very hard when you put them together. So our home life has been actually since all of the craziness in the world, my husband is actually going on two years also working from home. So we, we're all here all day, every day, everybody here. Uh, lots of things happening in our house. That is for sure. But let me offer you some tips. Now, 
The number one thing that I have to do, and I have to do this frequently, is I have to remind myself what my priorities are. Now, I am fortunate enough that because I am not on someone else's dime, I am not on their time, I can set my own schedule. And I am fortunate enough that my income and the money that I do make from these businesses has always been um, extra. It's never been what we needed to eat. Um, and because of that, I am able to prioritize the kids, the homeschool before the work. Now, my work does need to get done. Somebody is paying me for a product and so therefore I need to get those things out. With that comes a certain level and even before when I was in the salon, there is a great deal of self-discipline that comes with working from home, comes with being self-employed and comes with being a homeschool mom. These things really do go hand in hand because you are holding yourself accountable. You know, you're doing the taxes, you're doing the timekeeping, you're doing all of the things. All of those things do apply to all of those different factions of life. So you do need to be disciplined. So you need to set up your priorities. And if you're working from someone else, that priority, especially if you need that income to eat, that priority might be business first. And guys, that's okay. It is okay if your job is a greater priority to your family than your homeschool. That is okay. I am not going to fault you for that. You mamas, you do what you need to do to make your home run. So if it is prioritizing whichever one first, I'm not telling you which one it should be. I'm just saying that you need to have laid that out for yourself because then it will help you to make decisions and make choices that are going to keep you on that right track. I know that for me, I prioritize homeschool. Those are the boxes that need to get checked before my business boxes need to get checked. Now, how do I do that? Well, systems and routines. I tell you all the time, I like to get up early. If I get up early, then I can do a little bit of my self care. I can do a little bit of work and just check one cleaning thing off my list because it is not a priority. Cleaning my house is like five things down because again, running businesses, putting videos up here, making sure children are not just fed, happy, clothed, sheltered, but also educated. There's a lot of things there. So if my floors aren't clean, okay? But I know for myself, if I can get up, get a little bit of something in for myself, like a quiet cup of coffee or reading a book, then go ahead and check off a little bit of work something and clean something around my house before we're starting school day, then I know that I feel good because I have checked those boxes. Those are, that is a routine that helps me feel like I'm being successful. Do I think I'm not being successful if I don't check one of those? No, but I prefer to check them. I feel a lot better when I check one of those boxes. Am I gonna beat myself up about it? No, I'm not, and neither should you. Because we're prioritizing and because we are juggling so many more balls than the average bear, it is important that you are kind to yourself. I cannot stress this enough. I don't think there's anybody on the face of the planet who expects you to do all of these at 100%. And if they do, maybe we don't talk to them anymore, okay? Because that's not helpful. In that same thing, you need to recognize your limits, okay? Not only does no one else expect you to do this, you shouldn't be expecting yourself to do this. I do not expect my house to be clean all the time. No, there's no way I'm getting through every lesson, packaging, shipping, making every order, getting every video up here, responding to every comment, getting social media posts up every day, getting everything in my house clean and looking cute. None, none, no way is all of that happening. And I'm okay with that. Myself is at peace with that. So what I need to do is recognize my limits. Recognizing my limits means that I need to be able to Understand the value of my time. If my time is better spent homeschooling and packaging orders, then maybe I feel out cleaning the house. Maybe it is worth it to me in both time and dollars to have somebody come in and clean the floors. It's really important to understand your support system, whether that's your husband, your family, your mother, your cousin, your uncle, your brother, the person you're hiring. You need to understand that it is okay to ask for help, that it is okay and honestly preferred to establish a network 
network of people who are gonna help you get all those things done. It is important to delegate. And if you have set your priorities, you know where you need to put yourself and you need to let somebody else, if possible, handle those other things. And that is okay. It is not just okay, it's gonna make everything go much more smoothly and much easier. Now, you guys know I talk about this a lot. Something that helps me as a work from home homeschool mom, beyond routines, beyond the rest of this, is that I prefer an open and go curriculum. Why is that? Because I don't have the energy, the brain bandwidth, anything like that to invest more energy in that. Why? Because I'm running businesses. I cannot possibly invest more of myself in the, um, the kind of like, I don't know, administrative work of homeschool, that's not where I feel value. I feel value in just paying to have it done for me, again, because I'm trying to do like 57 other things. I'm okay with that. I like an open and go. I like that so much of our curriculum is focused on my kids increasing ability to do it themselves because guys, I will get up and work in the morning. We will, I will get the girls ready. As they're getting ready, I'm working. When they're eating breakfast, I'm usually working. So until I click in to be school time, guess what? If I'm trying to wrap something up, they can sit down at the school table and they know exactly the five or six things that they can pull out and start doing themselves. Start doing themselves, which saves me a lot of kind of grief and drama. Now, yes, my kids are a little bit older in the sense I have a nine and a five, but even the five-year-old knows what the expected chores are in the morning and then knows that she needs to get dressed and brush her teeth and eat breakfast and then knows that when it's time to start on school, where she should be starting. Does it always go smoothly? No, but there's this expectation of a routine that has set us up for as much possible success as we can possibly have. Now, Something else that is really important when you are in a work from home homeschool mom. There are many days when I'm like, I just gotta get these orders out, guys. I love you to death and I'm super sorry that that's where I need to put my focus. We've wrapped school for the day. So this afternoon, mom really needs to work. You know what helps me an absolute ton? Having things that my kids can do that I'm happy to be having them do. And that means we've got learning apps, we've got books, we've got Adventure Academy. Night Zookeeper comes into play here, guys. You know what else comes into play? The lovely crates from Knowledge Crates because they can sit down, it's something they wanna do, it's fun, it's immersive. I can tell you the skills they're working on when they do every single activity. So not only am I able to get stuff done because they're entertained and distracted, I can feel good about what they're doing. I do not, yes, I work from home. I really do, every day. I do not sit my kids down in front of YouTube unless it's something I'm specifically looking at for a lesson. My kids do not watch YouTube, okay? They do not sit there for hours on end watching television. That's not a thing I feel good about, so that's not a thing I'm gonna put in front of them. But what I am gonna do is I'm going to ma amass a large selection of things that is both time consuming distracting for them so that I can focus on something else, something they can do on their own. That way I can get stuff done. And one of those things that I absolutely love is knowledge crates. Now I am sharing the knowledge crates in this video today. This is going to go up, I think on December 10th. The reason I'm sharing this today is because uh, I want to show you the mini crates because they're such a fantastic gift idea. Now, if you can order today, December 10th, tomorrow, December 11th, guys, that's the cutoff. They're pretty sure for you to get it by Christmas. So I thought it was really important to share that before the Christmas cutoff because it is such a great gift idea. I want you to be able to have this in your pocket to show you. So I'm going to cut over and show you them doing these things. This is the unicorn crate. There's a unicorn in there. Ooh, sparkle paper. Yay. Ooh, and there are books. There's a never let a unicorn scribble book. Unicorn sensor beads. Ooh, there's paper. <gasps> <laughs> Bonus art materials. Materials. Unicorn dream catcher. I'm gonna have all the dream catchers. 
wooden unicorn. The canvas. Canvas. Ooh. Oh, that's for the dream catcher. <laughs> Unicorn I spy. That's fun. So it's got these cards, Unicorn Sensory Beads. These are all the activities that come in these mini crates. And then everything you need for them. Wooden unicorn, unicorn dough, unicorn I spy, unicorn canvas, read with me and Unicorn Dream Catcher. So how many activities is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven activities in just the Unicorn Mini Crate. Now, which one are you excited to do first? I don't know. You don't even know? This is the Pilot Crate. Oh my gosh! To do. As always guys, I do have a code for the quarterly and the annual subscription. There's no discount on the mini crates because they're already sold at such a low price point. Guys, seriously, the best things that you can do when you are working from home is set your priorities, get into a routine. You need to stay disciplined. You also need to keep those kids on track, but you need to give them something they can do and manage on their own. Now, I do say this all the time. I say this so frequently. I truly feel like it's a lost skill. If your work life is suffering irreparably, if your homeschool life is suffering irreparably. If you cannot get to the point where you can manage both, okay? Because your children's education is not something we should be sacrificing. If it's come to the place where you need to make the choice, you need to make the choice between work or school, if you need to put your kids in school, do that. If you need to quit your job and cut back on life so that you can homeschool, do that. The most important skill that I feel like society as a whole has gotten away from is knowing when to quit. I will be the first person to give you a round of applause. If you're struggling, if you're burning out, if it's impossible, if you're drowning, get help, but also know when to quit. There's no reason you have to do this all, guys. There's really no reason. And if you can't rework your priorities in order to figure out what the right answer is, take a beat, know when to quit. By all means, write down in the comments or over on Instagram at Making Everyday Magic. I'm here to help you. Guys, I really want to be a voice of reasonable expectations. Sometimes that reasonable choice is to quit something. We don't always have to do it all, okay? So just keep that in mind. And by all means, if you are mentally exhausted, if you're mentally burnt, please seek help in some form or fashion. Girls' night, therapy, whatever it is, okay? Be sure and ask for help before you really need it, okay? 
Guys, I hope that you found any of this helpful, entertaining, or informative. If you did, please scroll down, hit the big red subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications, give this video a thumbs up. Knowledge Crates, we have both the Pirates and the Unicorns. They're super awesome. They really are a fantastic company to work with. They are really run by working moms. So I don't think anybody's gonna understand the importance of what they're putting in this box better than these women, okay? they. Guys, they're running a company. They get it. They understand the struggle that is working from home with kids. They were born out of the necessity of working from home with kids during this pandemic. They feel you on a deep and personal level, guys. A deep and personal level. Be sure and go show Knowledge Crate some love, whether on their social or if you're ordering from them through their site. Let them know I sent you because, well, I really like those guys. They're pretty awesome. So, guys, I hope you found any of this helpful or entertaining. Guess what? It's almost Christmas, and I'm so excited. I hope you're also excited. It's an exciting time of year. It doesn't get harder, though. Like, my business ramps up. It gets a little harder. It gets a little harder. But that's also why we cut out early on school. And I will have that video coming soon. Why we take an extra long break at the holidays. So, there we go, guys. Bye. One more thing I totally forgot to say, which is really important. It can be really easy, even if you're just a stay-at-home mom. If you're a stay-at-home mom, homeschool, homeschool mom, work from home mom, it is really easy for these four walls to be the only ones you see for extended period of time. It is very easy to go into your house and to not come out. Please. It's easy to nose to the grindstone. I'm very guilty of it many days where I realize all I've done is mom and work. If you need to, guys, one of the things that's really helpful, schedule fun with your kids. Don't forget that of all the things you do, of all the hats you wear, none of them will ever be more important than mom, regular mom, not work mom, not homeschool mom, mom. It is important if you need to schedule your fun with your children. What they will remember is not necessarily how you taught them, how you worked, it, none of that. But they will remember the mom, mom of you. So please, if you need to, sit down, schedule the fun with your kids. Don't forget that of all the priorities, whether it's working or schooling or whatever, number one is always mom. Okay, you are a parent before you are a teacher. You are a parent before you are a worker. You are part of a family before you are any of those things. So please do not forget the importance of maintaining, first and foremost, the number one hat you will ever wear, and that's as a parent.